Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to another video. We've all been there, right? We've practiced, we've qualified well, we're excited to get racing, maybe even a bit nervous. And within seconds of the lights going green, it's all over. We're in the gravel trap or the barrier with the meatball flag. It's infuriating and often it can feel like there's nothing you can do to avoid it. But while yes, sometimes others on track will just do a crazy thing or make a mistake and you'll have nowhere to go, I'm here today to tell you that more of your fate is in your own hands than you think. So here's five things you need to know to help avoid getting wrecked on lap one. When you start a race in the majority of car classes in the majority of sims, you'll be racing with cold tyres, cold brakes and race fuel. This means your car will likely feel completely different to the qualifying lap you just put in a few minutes ago, and probably different to the handful of practice laps you squeezed in before the session. And it'll feel totally alien to any hot lapping or time trials that you've done. Most likely the car will understeer, be temperamental on the throttle and be prone to locking up. You need to change your driving style at the beginning of the race to take account of these factors. And in most cars, it'll take at least a lap or two before the car starts to feel more compliant. Given the start of the race is the time of maximum danger, it's really quite something that most of us spend so little time practicing in conditions that replicate this phase of the race. So make sure you understand the information on your dash or hood, which can give you valuable clues on brake and tyre temperatures and pressures, and run some practice time on full fuel and cold temperatures. Or another great way to find the limits at this stage of the race is to utilise AI races in your chosen sim. On to number two, and who can honestly say they spend much time practising how to get their car off the line? Sure, for some cars this might not be too problematic, hold the revs at a certain level, then floor it when the lights go green. But for most, there is a need to modulate the throttle and time gear shifts correctly, or else you risk bogging down and causing chaos to drivers behind, or spearing off the track and into someone's path. So always remember to spend a bit of time familiarising yourself with how the car will launch into the race, especially from a standing start. Do a solo session or find some clear track off the racing line and do some practising ahead of the race start. And remember, it's likely at least someone else will get their start wrong. If it's a driver ahead of you, you need to be ready to take avoiding action. That means spatial awareness is key for what's going on around you and in your mirrors. If you're not in VR, a radar is absolutely critical for this stage of the race. If your sim has one, use it. And remember, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, leaving a like on YouTube will help other sim racers find it too. Number three, another big challenge at the start of the race is the crowded track. Yes, this can lead to more accidents, more on that at the end of the video, but just as importantly, it means you're more likely to be pushed off the ideal racing line. Think about it, even if you're taking the time to simulate race conditions in terms of time of day, weather, tyre temps and fuel, do you ever spend time practising alternative lines and braking points for those times when you're not on the racing line? Because you need to. Even if you're stuck on the inside of a corner, your braking point will be different. Get it wrong and you'll run wide on exit and potentially into another car. Later in the race you might get away with it, but at the race start with so many cars running so closely together, missing your braking marker because you don't know when to slow your car offline or dipping tyres into the grass and spinning because you were pushed out wide is extremely common. Again, utilising AI races here can be helpful, but failing that, use some of whatever practice time you have running a few different lines through corners. You'll soon pick up some additional reference points and you'll be safer as a result. Number four, it's really important that you try to keep a hold of your nerves. I'm sure it sounds silly to those who don't sim race, but even after years of doing it, every time I line up on an online grid, I have a few butterflies in my stomach. If I'm not careful, that can lead me to tense up in terms of my steering wheel inputs and my throttle and brakes. And given what we've already discussed in terms of the temperature of the car, that is the last thing you need. So as best you can, try to focus on driving safely and steadily. You're more likely to make a mistake if you second guess yourself, you're overly cautious, or you make erratic moves trying to get out of people's way. The race will soon calm down and you'll be into your groove. 
And finally, number five, everybody gets worried about turn one. But for me, turn two, turn three, or wherever there's a big braking zone towards the end of the first lap is just as big a worry, if not more so, because people get less cautious as the lap goes on. The track is going to be crowded throughout the first lap, maybe even into the second lap, until the field evens out a bit. You have to be alert for incidents and overtakes throughout. Some people will rejoin into traffic, so you've got to be wary of cars returning to the track. And remember, if you do get caught up in something, the best thing you can do is be predictable. Even if it means slowing and waiting for other cars to pass, you'll lose a lot less time doing this than getting serious damage, and you'll be far less likely to spoil anyone else's race. In my experience, those who gun it through the opening lap or two of online races usually only succeed in winning the race to the pit lane for repairs. Even in a 15 minute sprint, there is plenty of time for your pace to shine through and to make up places outside of the chaotic opening lap. So keep your eyes peeled and crash antennae on high alert for the whole of the opening lap and you'll be well set to make up places later in the race. And if you want to see a perfect example of all of the points that I've covered in this video, check out the race on screen now.